Osteosarcoma represents one of the most common primary tumors of bone. Even though the bones vary in size and shape, they are all made of the same types of cells, and chief among them are osteoblasts, which build up new bone. And osteosarcomas arise from osteoblasts of different sizes, and these cells produce too much osteoid tissue, which is the unmineralized organic portion of the bone matrix that forms prior to the maturation of bone tissue. This is why osteosarcoma is called a bone-forming tumor. Now this image shows the age distribution of osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma has bimodal age distribution. 75% of osteosarcomas occur in persons younger than 20 years of age. The smaller second peak occurs in older adults who frequently suffer from conditions known to predispose to osteosarcoma. So what are the causes of osteosarcoma? Approximately 70% of osteosarcomas have acquired genetic abnormalities such as complex structural and numerical chromosomal aberrations. Molecular studies have shown that these tumors usually have mutations in well-known tumor suppressors and oncogenes. With mutations, proto-oncogenes become oncogenes, and these overstimulate the cell growth. To balance out cell growth, there are other genes called tumor suppressor genes, which promote apoptosis or cell death of mutated cells. So oncogenes or mutated tumor suppressor genes allow cells to keep growing uncontrollably resulting in tumors. Osteosarcoma can arise in any bone in the body, but there is a striking propensity for this tumor to occur in the metaphyseal region of the long bones. And also the distal femur, proximal tibia, and proximal humerus represent the most common sites of involvement. Now let's look at the symptoms. The most common initial symptoms are pain and swelling. Initially the pain is slight and intermittent, but within a short time it increases in severity and duration. Pain is usually worse at night and gradually requires medication, but symptoms can vary. For example, some patients may have pulmonary metastases. In those situations, individuals can also have a cough or dyspnea. The patient may also have systematic symptoms such as fever, weight loss, and decreased appetite. The diagnosis of bone tumor starts with medical imaging, like x-rays, CT scans, and MRI imaging or testing for serum tumor markers that are specific for each type of tumor. For example, there may be a two- or three-fold increase in the serum alkaline phosphates level. Normally, alkaline phosphates increase when there is bone formation because it's the byproduct of osteoblast activity, which is a bone-forming cell. And because osteosarcoma is a bone-forming tumor, there is increase in serum alkaline phosphates level in the osteosarcoma patients. As we mentioned, osteosarcoma is a bone-forming tumor. As the tumor enlarges, it breaks through the cortex, lifts the periosteum, which is a dense layer of vascular connective tissue enveloping the bones and forms a soft tissue mass. The triangular shadow between the cortex and raised ends of periosteum, known radiographically as Codman's triangle. And finally, core needle biopsy with histological examination of tumor material is the definitive diagnostic test, which should be done after local staging has been completed using conventional radiographs, CT, and MRI. Now, treatment consists of adjuvant induction chemotherapy with MAP therapy, which consists of high-dose methotrexate, doxorubicin, and cisplatin. Induction therapy lasts approximately 10 weeks and is followed by local surgery during week 11. Following definitive resection and amputation, an additional 17 weeks of adjuvant chemotherapy with MAP is recommended. Regarding surgery, the vast majority of malignant tumors of the long bones are treated with a variety of limb-sparing procedures that employ the use of prosthesis, allografts, or autograft. Rotation plasty is another option for patients as an alternative to amputation for skeletal immature patients with tumors of the femur. This procedure consists of excising the distal femur with the objective of obtaining clear surgical margins. And finally, recurrent disease and local and pulmonary metastasis can be managed with diphosphamide alone or in combination with etoposide. Do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.